are here gathered Thank you very much. Please resume your seats. So, my name is Kwame Usudanso, and I'll be doing this with my friend and brother, Pakwesi Shandov, who is with Joy FM currently. And let me begin by saying that it was Che Guevara who said that if you tremble with indignation at every injustice, then you are a comrade of mine. And therefore, it is the same indignation which has brought all of us together. And it is important to give commendation to Arise Ghana for putting the feet of government to the fire of responsibility and accountability. Over the past one year, they've been resilient, they've been forceful, they've been forthright, and they've been steadfast in fighting against injustices and in fighting against political and economic malaise in this country. And they found it expedient to put this together so that we can all draw some important lessons from all the things which are happening across the continent, which material conditions are not different from that which we're experiencing in Ghana. So, if your hands are not too busy, shall we give a resounding round of applause to arise Ghana. Well, thank you. It is important that once we are in the territory or the constituency of a member of parliament, she properly introduces us to uh, ourselves and also introduces the program to all of us. So um, if Dr. Zaneto Rollins is here, um, okay, she's not. All right. Thank you very much. Right. So, shall we take some music then? And then we'll proceed with the program. Thank you.
music well for such an event it is expected that we would have people who align with the spirit of pan-africanism and people who have demonstrated over the years that they support pan-africanism and the complete unification of Africa and there are several of them seated here and so I'm going to take two quick messages from two of them um, and I think it's not part of the program, but it's important that they share with us some solidarity messages. Ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, with a round of applause, shall we welcome up here Honorable Sam George. there ever was a definition of the word ambush you just saw that maybe I should serve notice to my namesake honorable Kujetu Ablakwa you may be next in the firing line but a very good afternoon to everybody and um, seniors comrades here in Ghana it gives me great pleasure that we stand here Ghana has always been the bedrock of pan-africanism and a beacon of hope on the black continent unfortunately that light and fire has dimmed over the past seven years. We have seen the eradication of the gains that we have made in our fourth republic as a country and as a beacon of a nascent, beaming and booming democracy. We have moved away from a democracy to a kleptocracy and an autocracy led by a despot who has absolutely no regards for the human rights of the Ghanaian citizens. If we gather in here this afternoon to listen to a senior comrade who has walked his talk, I hope that it would only galvanize all of us for the task ahead on the 7th of December 2024. That the December 7, 2024 election is not about the NDC or a political party. It's about the soul and spirit of the nation Ghana. The country that Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah fought for and liberated when there was no hope on this continent. To those of us young ones in this room, it behoves on us. I see my senior, Kobia Champon here, and I see how gray he's gone. They fought their fight. It's our turn. Our fight must not be on WhatsApp platforms and on social media. Our fight must be in the trenches, in the villages and in the, vi in the, in the polling stations. We must take the message of redemption that comes to the 24-hour economy to the people of this country. We must restore the democracy that this country was once heralded for. It's our call. It's our cause. Let's all get on board. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. I think we can do it better for him, please. That really went down well. It says it must not be fought only on WhatsApp platforms and on social media platforms, but we, can, we must go to every nook and cranny of this country to preach the word of the NDC and to talk about 24-hour economy. I think we can do it again for him, please. And again, Honorable Sam George was very quick to appreciate what is happening here. He preempted I think he's the next prophet uh, to declare whether or not Ghana will win the AFCON. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are coming home. Are oh, you prophesied? 
Again, round of applause. <laughs> Honorable Samuel, or rather Sam Okujeto Ablakwa, is known to all of us. Hey, you are even about to clap. <laughs> and you know that he's been very forceful and very, very firm in his position and his stance about this government. He's been involved in several exposés has given us the opportunity of appreciating the depth of the corruption that we are experiencing in this country. And so I think it's important that he shares a word or two with us here. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Honorable <laughs> Sam Okugeto Ablakwa. My brother Sam was right. The ambush continues. <laughs> Comrades and friends, let me also salute Arise Ghana for putting this gathering together. And I want to commend all of you for making the time to gather here today. We all know the circumstances under which we gather. We are living in very troubling times. We are under an economic crisis, a period of haircuts and debt restructuring where even your savings and your own earnings are no longer yours. They have been hijacked by the cabal, which has mismanaged our economy. And so, to find the resources to travel far and wide and come here today, it shows the commitment that you have to the struggle. We must continue to reflect on what we can all do as young activists to fulfill the hopes and aspirations of our forefathers. If really we must attain continental African unity, if really we must break free from the shackles of dependence, from the shackles of poverty, from the shackles of underdevelopment, the shackles of unemployment, then we have work to do. We must come together, we must put aside all the artificial differences with the enemy deliberately crafted so that those differences continuously keep us distracted and prevent us from uniting to fight poverty, to fight underdevelopment, to fight disease and to fight the forces that want to keep us divided. So my message of solidarity is that let us keep hope alive. Let us not allow anybody to intimidate us. This is the land of our birth. This is our continent. And we will not allow any autocrat to prevent us from achieving what we have set before us. And since our distinguished guests are here, let me hand over the podium to our Master of uh, Ceremony and thank you all for coming. God bless you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Honorable Sam Samolokuyeto Ablakwa. Um, as you can see, our guests are in and I think we need to give them a bigger round of applause. And I was fortunate to 
study in Nkrumah School in Bella Bella, so I can say Amandla. Oh, you are there, you know. Amandla. Away to welcome, comrade, to Ghana, the land of democracy. I shall hand over the microphone to my colleague Parkwesi Shandov to introduce the next set of items on the program. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Kwame. I think um, the grounds have been sufficiently wet and uh, the rings would fall anytime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, a round of applause for all of ourselves, uh, having taken time off our busy schedules to be here. This particular auditorium is located in an enclave in a particular constituency, uh, and therefore, I think it is appropriate that we go ahead and receive the um, welcome address by the host MP, Dr. Zanetto Rawlings. Please, a round of applause for Dr. Zanetto Rawlings. Good afternoon, and you're most welcome. Welcome to Ghana, comrade, and uh, welcome to my constituency. You're in the heart of Kloti Kole, which is one of the finest constituencies in the country. Of course, I say a big welcome to <laughs> I say a big welcome to my colleague MP, who is acknowledging that it is the finest constituency with a nod, and um, our dear comrades from Arise Ghana and all politically represented persons here, not just here by party colors, but here because you are people who believe not only in a vision as a country, but the Pan-African vision, because that is what our comrade here, who's here to address us is going to speak to. And that's the kind of reputation he's earned for himself. Um, I will keep my comments very brief because I think we are a little bit behind schedule so that he can have ample time to speak and um, perhaps we can share ideas. And so I will stand on existing protocols. If there's anyone else I haven't acknowledged, we will do so in due course. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm glad to see that you're here, taking time off to be here to listen to amazing words of wisdom from uh, a, a bit of a, a mover and shaker on our continent. across generations and across borders. We live on a continent that was carved out not by ourselves, where various families were split up based on their colonial masters, which has created problems that we perhaps are not really averting our minds to with regards to the severity of what these borders have done to our togetherness as Africans. Indeed, as a continent, we are very diverse. But there's so much more we have in common, and I think that commonality is what was um, disrupted, not just by um, slavery on some level, but also the colonial masters on the other. And unfortunately, we are seeing also what is a trend of um, the new masters who are those cloaked in the, 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 the suits of Democrats, but are using democracy to undermine the very pillars that are supposed to encourage nation building. And so if we're here today, I'm sure today the boom speech will come from someone else, not a Rawlings. Thank God for that. <laughs> and um, just to put it into context, um, we know that as a country we have a national security policy and high ranking on one of the risks to our security is corruption. And corruption has now been said so many times that people are starting to become less sensitive to the impact of corruption on our lives. But whether it's in the educational sector, the health sector, whether it's in governance, corruption has become the canker that's eating us inside out. And if we as a nation are the home of democracy, and we indeed are supposed to be the gold standard, then we as the citizens need to demand greater accountability of our leaders, 
we need to be sure that we understand the processes involved so that people who feel they understand the processes better cannot use the processes to undermine the very pillars of good governance that we aspire to that ensure that we have a secure future for the next generation. And um, in our trip today, just to mention that um, we escorted our comrade to pay courtesies on the former president Mahama and Kufuo, and then of course subsequently visited the Nkrumah Mausoleum where a brief history and a wreath was laid on behalf of the economic freedom fighters. And um, with that, I would welcome you all, Comrade Julius, our former GS, our current MP, representatives of the EFF, of course, this is your home. Back in the days when Mamawini and other freedom fighters were here as part of us, many of the freedom fighters in South Africa and the rest of the continent had Ghanaian passports because we were following through on that declaration that Nkrumah made during independence that the, the freedom, the independence of this country meant nothing without the total emancipation of the continent. And that remains true. If we're looking at the African Continental Free Trade Agreement and we can't see how there's justice and economic stability across the continent, we will not achieve anything. It remains only in paper, only in concept, what would be something great that will not touch the lives of the ordinary citizen. Everything that we're doing here must be us grow, uh, sowing a seed that we may not actually reap, that we may not have the opportunity, a tree under which to sit, but we must know that generational leaders, visionary leaders, are those who don't do things based on what they expect for themselves today. And that, I believe, is why we're here today, to share that inspiration, to encourage one another, that in spite of the fact that it's a five and a half fly, hour flight from here to South Africa, we are much closer than we think. And if we can look past the artificial borders and language barriers that have been created amongst us and understand that at the core of it all, we have a vision as Africans, the love, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the camaraderie that we share, that is stronger than any other thing that can be placed in between us as barriers. And so as we are here today, I would like to, on behalf of not just the constituency, not just the NDC which I represent, not just the other colleagues who are here and comrades, oh, I've just seen my other comrade here, Honorable George. Yes, this is still the coolest constituency. Yay. Um, I would like to welcome you all and to wish you the very best. I hope you will come back. We know you have your elections coming up in May. We do wish you the very best. Indeed, it is not enough for us to talk, but to do what we say we will do. We're looking at a generation that should make a difference not just waiting for someone else to do it. So if we are here, we must speak truth to power. We must, for a difference, show that we are ready to take up the leadership as the younger generation. The nation builders, that is us, because before we had that opportunity, it was those who won independence and fought for independence. And beyond that, the paradigm shift must happen, and that is in our hands. And so without much ado, I would like to warmly welcome our brother, our comrade, our uh, dear friend, who will speak shortly after I have finished my remarks, because I can see Bernard is staring at me to not invite you onto the stage right away, so I'm to leave that to someone else. But our comrade Julius Malema, you're welcome. We know what you represent, and a lot of people are expecting some unusual remarks. What they don't know is at heart the kind of a man that you are. So today they will get to know you close hand and get to understand what it is that you feel for us, not just as a country, so that we can invite our dear brother to come on stage and to actually make the remarks that he has to. Thank you so very much. Okay. So I don't know how to describe this. So whether it's doom kra or doom kakra kakra. Small, small, tot, tot. I'd like to remind all of us that this program is streamed live on Wazor TV, UTV, Joy News, TV3, Metro TV, TVXYZ, GH1, Pan African TV, Loud Silence TV, CTV, and other media networks across the country. 
So thank you to all of you who are streaming this program live on your platforms. All right. Uh, very soon we shall be getting into the purpose of our gathering and really the essence of uh, this particular convocation. But we want to hear from a rep um, from Arise Ghana. Bernard Mona is the man who will be doing that. Please put your hands together for <laughs> Bernard Mona. It's very uncommon to speak on a presidential height this. I've been forced to read from a paper. And as I was coming here, you saw Ludwig insisting that I should read. Comrade, I will disappoint you. And so I will not read. But I will give the script to you and to the media so you can take it because we want you to speak for the full time. First and foremost, on behalf of Arise Ghana, I want to welcome Comrade Malema and the EFF team from South Africa to Ghana. We are welcoming you to Ghana not because you are a visitor, but because you have stayed away from home for a considerable period of time, and today you are here. <laughs> the youth of Ghana, just like the youth of South Africa, just like the youth of Nigeria, the youth of every other village we call a country in the continent of Africa, are yearning to hear your voice. And it is our duty to provide that platform, the reason for which Arise Ghana jointly and collaborated with EFF to get this one done. Let it be known that we share common history, our history of colonialism, where those who earlier came were looking for gold and they ended up trading in human beings and taking the human best out of our continent for the enrichment of their countries. Similarly, as we endured the difficulties of colonialism, apartheid was also suffered by the people of South Africa. And it is no secret that the difficulties that the people of Ghana face under colonialism, you face under apartheid. Today, we have seen that you have been talking about the apartheid system that is currently operating in South Africa. Don't forget that the apartheid system in South Africa is almost like the colonial system in Ghana, where we simply took away power from the white man, but handed over to another white man, but in black skin. We say this because if you go across the streets of Ghana, many young people who have acquired various skills are without jobs. Because every sector of our economy has been taken away by the white man in black skin and actually freely given to the white man in white skin. So we do not have any opportunities. Evidently, from the extractive sector to the manufacturing sector, every sector of this economy has been mortgaged through corruption and through personal aggrandizement by those who are in power. As we speak today, Ghana, with all the wealth we have in gold, we do not own one gold mining company. And our shares in the mining company is less than 5%. Thereby, a chunk of the people of Ghana are unable to get jobs because they have simply sold our rights to foreigners. Similar things we are suffering in South Africa. I can see that GS, uh, SG is northern. Evidently, we speak today, lithium that we recently discovered in enormous proportion and for commercial purposes is being auctioned to some Mozungus somewhere to the disadvantage of the people of Ghana and the people of Africa. And we are told to clap because we are able to get 10% of that lithium 
in terms of royalties, not even in real ownership. And every day we are told that this is the best deal we have gotten since colonial era. The people of Africa cannot settle for less. Particularly so that you have been speaking that we have to have a borderless Africa. We in Ghana, we have very exciting stories to tell you. If you just go across Togo, where Dr. Zenatos' um, other village is, it's evident that you see a Togoli whose bedroom is actually in Ghana and the kitchen is in Togo. That is the kind of houses we have. You will see somebody whose farm is in Ghana but he resides in Togo. If you go across Burkina Faso, it's the same thing. If you go across to Cote d'Ivoire, it's the same thing. And we speak the same language, we eat the same food, we celebrate the same festivals and what have you. That should tell us that some white man somewhere, in some years back, sat in Berlin and took a pencil and just carved and said that this parcel belongs to France, this parcel belongs to Australians, this parcel belongs to Portuguese, this parcel belongs to the English, and then we accepted it. This you have been fighting. So on this African Dialogue series, we had no option than to invite the man who has been speaking eloquently and so passionately about the desires of young people to lead Africa to its proper perspective. So Arise Ghana is happy to welcome you to your home and to invite you to speak to the people of Ghana and the young people. Thank you so much. Um, apologies, the, the bride will soon be outdoored. Uh, the communication was slightly, you know. Um, before we, we finally hear from Julius Malema, the choir is ready to uh, chart the atmosphere with a rendition. Kwa, over to you. Please, let's be upstanding uh, as we stay in the company of the choir for this one. Arise, Ghana Youth for your country. The nation demands your devotion. After that, of course, Julius would have the floor. Malema. With a great deal of respect, let me invite up here Mr. Ludwig to introduce us to our speaker. Round of applause, please. May you be seated. May you be seated. <laughs> We 
are all involved. We are all involved in building a motherland. Ladies and gentlemen, we are really all involved. We have to build our motherland. We will build it and build Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, about 14 years ago, I was a youth leader of a political party here in Ghana. I led a powerful delegation to South Africa at the invitation of a young man who was performing wonders in South Africa. We were all itching to identify with him. And so we got to South Africa and had a very wonderful moment with this young man. Years later, there was an issue in South Africa. You all remember the xenophobia issue. And everybody was quiet. And this gentleman decided to speak. Ghanaians were worried because our citizens were going through a lot of difficulties. We have to arrange for him to speak on a number of radio stations in Ghana. And I remember some of the interviewers asked when he will be in Ghana, and he said, that time will come. That time will come. And ladies and gentlemen, born on the 3rd of March, 1981. He's just a very small boy, you know. <laughs> 1981, at Sechego Limpopo, in the not most, not most province of the South African state. Our special guest is a renowned South African politician who is admired by his passionate revolutionary style and dedication to creating a radical transformation within South Africa. Juju, as he is affectionately called, and known across the globe, began his political journey with the African National Congress Youth Pioneers at the age of nine. He assumes leadership role in the Congress of South African Students during his high school days. We call it the um, ANC uh, Student Wing, which is called COSAS. He became the leader of COSAS in Limpopo. And uh, it's a, it's a pre-tertiary organization aligned with the African National Congress in, in, in South Africa. I mean, he grew up in Limpopo. He was elected the president of COSAS, national president of COSAS at a point where he led the battle for free education and the fight against corporal punishment in South Africa. He also served as the provincial secretary of the Youth League in Limpopo and later as the national president of the African National Congress Youth League in South Africa. Juju's ideology differences with the ANC led to him parting ways with the party since 2012. On the 16th of August 2021, some workers of the mines in South Africa were massacred and killed by the South African police during a six-week strike. The incident which became known as the Marikana Massacre by Lomnin and the South African police took a center stage across the world. His criticism about the killing of these mine workers opened a new chapter in the politics of South Africa with the birth of the Economic Freedom Fighters Party in 2013. Under his stewardship, ladies and gentlemen, the Economic Freedom Fighters gained significant support in the 20. 14 national election, emerging as the third largest political party in South Africa's parliament. In the year 2019 election, the EFF increased its representation in the National Assembly and Provisional Legislature. Ladies and gentlemen, our special guest is a member of parliament in the National Assembly of South Africa, serving on parliamentary committees including the Joint Committee on Ethics and Member Interests, Joint Constitutional Review Committee 
and the ad hoc committee. He also sits on the Judicial Service Commission in South Africa, an institution responsible for overseeing the interviews and appointment of judicial judges in South Africa and ensuring accountability regarding judges' misconduct. You all remember when they were interviewing the judges, he told the one that, remember, I will be president of South Africa. So respect yourself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he has led the EFF for 10 years, advocating for the underprivileged and the unity of Africa in particular. His call for intracontinental trade, economic cooperation within Africa, and call for an African free from grips of corruption and imperialism has made him a notable figure in the liberation of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people see him as someone who always boom. But today, His Excellency, former President of the Republic, John Ajekun Kufo said he had a perception of him. But after meeting him today, he thinks that Julius is the type of young man Africa needs moving forward. And he gave him his blessings and support to join colleagues in Ghana and other parts of the world to sing the African song across the continent. Ladies and gentlemen, invited guests, join me as I welcome to the podium our special guest for this August event, the first time in the history of Ghana, the founder and leader of the EFF, our brother and comrade, the commander-in-chief, comrade Julius Malema. Ladies and gentlemen, Juju. We can do it better. We can do it better for Juju. Thank you very much for those kind words of introduction by my brother, Ludwig. Um, Dr. Zineta, Rowling and your brother, JJ, and the, the entire family of President Rowling and the leadership of Arise and the leadership of the NDCA, CPP, the student representatives and the national youth organizations that are here and all those dignitaries that made this possible want to take this opportunity to salute you and appreciate the effort you have taken in making sure that we dialogue amongst ourselves as Africans without supervision. That we require nobody to come and be a supervisor for us to meet. That we can call each other on our own and have a conversation and where we don't find one another we agree to disagree go different directions to meet again tomorrow because we believe in the power of persuasion this morning i had an opportunity to meet president mahama and president kofo and we also visited a very important leader of our revolution because we believe in both the living and the dead. So when you visit former presidents that are alive, you have a duty to also visit those that were revolutionary and have passed on, like President Kwame Nkrumah. So we are here today to really salute the good work he has done. Maybe some historical background is also important before we get into issues because we believe that we did not start the revolution. We inherited the revolution and therefore it's important to always remind ourselves of where we come from. 
prior to European arrival, Ghana was home to powerful empires like the mighty Ashante, renowned for their gold trade and military prowess. These societies had complex social structures, sophisticated cultural traditions, and well-developed trade networks. An early victim of European interests, the European presence in Ghana began with the Portuguese explorers who arrived in the 15th century and from then till the 19th century, Ghana, then known, then known as the Gold Coast, became a major source of enslaved people for the transatlantic trade. European powers established ports and trading ports along the coast exchanging manufactured goods for enslaved Africans captured primarily from the interior regions. The forced removal of millions of people had a profound demographic and social impact on Ghana. It weakened communities, fueled interstate conflict and led to cultural loss. The transatlantic slave trade left a deep an enduring mark on Ghana's collective memory. While acknowledging the trauma inflicted, it's important, it's important to recognize the resilience and resistance displayed by many communities and individuals during this period. However, it was the Dutch, British and later the French who played more significant roles in the colonization of the Gold Coast, what is now called Ghana. The British gradually expanded their influence and control through trade and establishments of ports along the coastline. By the mid-19th century, the Gold Coast became a British colony. The scramble for Africa saw Britain and other European countries aggressively caving up the continent. The Gold Coast fell under British control marking the start of formal colonial rule as a result of the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885. The imposition of colonial rule led to significant social changes. Traditional social structures were often disrupted and a new system were introduced to serve the interests of the colonizers. Furthermore, missionary activities played a role in introducing Western education and administration. Christianity and a class of educated Africans who often aligned with the colonial rulers while the majority remained marginalized. There are those who, want to, who wanted to assimilate with the British policies, undermining their own traditional languages, customs and belief systems, contributing to a loss of cultural activity. The Gold Coast economy also became solely reliant on exporting raw materials, hindering internal development. The formation of political organizations such as the Convention People's Party, CPP, marked the beginning of organized political movement seeking self-determination. Ideas of Pan-Africanism, emphasizing continental unity and liberation from colonialism, fueled the independent movements all over the continent. Intellectuals like Kwame Nkrumah emerged as powerful voices advocating for self-determination. The CPP, founded in 1949 by Kwame Nkrumah, mobilized mass protests and strikes, forcing the British to acknowledge the desire for independence. Initially resistant to independence, the British eventually considered due to internal pressure and rising international dissent. Their primary concern was maintaining economic interest and ensuring a smooth transition. Traditional authorities and ordinary Ghanaians, from farmers and miners to students and intellectuals, contributed to the struggle through protests by court and their unwavering support for the independence. The whole continent started learning from Ghana that it is possible. So when you go to Ghana, it is not because you are going to teach Ghanaians anything, because they have seen it all, including leading the first determination of an African state on the 6th of March 1957. So Ghana is a home of 
democracy. And this country was led by Kwame Nkrumah, a charismatic leader who emphasized Pan-Africanism because he understood that Ghana's independence, independence alone is meaningless. Following the independence of Ghana, all liberation movements found a home here in Ghana. The organization of South Africa, such as the ANC, the organization of Angola, such as MPLA, the organization of Mozambique, such as Frelimo, and many other liberation movements found this place as a liberated zone. And many of them started knowing what a passport looks like from here because Nkwame Nkuruma make it a point that they are able to travel all over the world to spread the message of Pan-Africanism and independence of Africa. <laughs> Nkuruma did not only develop connections amongst African state and liberation movements, Nkuruma developed connections with African-American artists writers and all kind of people who were found in diaspora. That's why a lot of African Americans found resonance and found Ghana to be a place they can identify with as their home. So Nkuruma's idea has always been that black people who are found everywhere must always be in solidarity with each other because they are the most hated people all over the world. It doesn't matter where you find them. If you find a black person in China, give them love, because you must know they are hated. If you find a black person in the U.S. or even in Russia, you must embrace one another irrespective of the countries you come from, because you are both hated. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how educated you are. As long as you are an African, they treat you like a reject. That's why the unity of Africans and Pan-Africanism does not only mean those who are found in Africa. It means everybody else that looks African who is found everywhere in the corner of the world. Because those are the people who have been robbed of their humankind. We also know that this country is the one that leads with successful succession which are peaceful. Of course, it experienced a bit of difficulty at some point. But since then, Ghana became the most celebrated democracy. But the democracy of Ghana is threatened by corruption. A corruption that made sure that Ghana does not pay its international debt. As a result, today Ghana is unable to self-determine because everything else is dictated to Ghana by IMF and the World Bank because the current leadership failed to honor their obligation. Corruption is a threat to a wonderful democracy anyway because it's eating on the moral fiber of democratic dispensation. We must never ever celebrate anyone who is corrupt or seek to defend the corrupt individuals irrespective of our political affiliation. Those who are stealing from the public purse now, they are stealing for, from the future. That's why they are unable to pay their debt now and they will not be able to pay the debt in future. And it is you, the youth of Africa, that are going to inherit the debt and you will not be able to develop your own countries. There is a tendency in the African continent of the youth defending the old corrupt because they give them the little money now and they forget the future. If you value yourself, if you value the future of this continent, you must stand tall and unashamedly fight corruption everywhere where it raises its ugly head. Don't care who says what. You must always speak truth to power. 
It doesn't matter who gets offended. The truth remains the truth, whether you are standing, whether you are sitting, whether you are sleeping, the truth will never change. And one thing you must know is that when you tell the truth to the powers that be, they may pretend now that they do not hear what you are saying. But when they are sleeping alone, their conscience speaks to them and they must answer the question, is he or, the or, is he or she telling the truth? And if the answer is yes, you have achieved your mission. They will never know they are corrupt until someone tells them on their faces that you are for yourself, you are for your family, you are for friends, you are for the politically connected, and you are not for our continent because our continent is about the unity of African people that is based on economic ownership of the means of production. I want to say this today here, that xenophobic people are people who suffer from self-hate. Because when you love yourself, you will never hate another person. A black person who looks like you should serve as a mirror to you. When you look at that black person, you must see yourself. And therefore, you cannot say the people from Ivory Coast are not needed here in Ghana. They are taking our jobs and our opportunities because there is no Ivory Coast, there is no Ghana. There is no Nigeria, there is no South Africa, there is no Liberia, there is no Botswana, there is Africa. Because we <laughs> never determine these artificial borders. Some people went to sit somewhere and decided to divide us. And they did that with a pen and took away our brains. Because there is no wall. In other places there is no fence. Yet we see the wall and the fence that doesn't exist. We are unable to break these imaginary artificial, artificial borders because our boss told us that we are divided. We are being treated like mad people where you've got a gate without a fence. All of you, when you want to exit to Ivory Coast, you go to a border and that border is a gate but when you check on the side of the gate, there is no fence. Our people are living together. So Africa must stop behaving like a drunken master who goes through a gate in a yard that doesn't have a fence. It will never have a fence because we are one thing. We marry into each other's communities and families. We go to each other's activities we share cultures and I know for sure that the people of Ghana dance to Ama Piano. So why would they think that they are not South Africans and why South Africans will think that they are not Ghanaians? It's only an imagination that was instilled in our heads by our colonial masters. We have to make sure that as a new generation we do away with this. We as a younger generation of Africa, we must not seek to get rid of the old in a disparate manner to a point where we destroy institutional memory. We must always make sure that the old coexist with the young, but the old must be prepared to pass the wisdom to the young ones, for because at some point the old must die for the new to emerge. And it's not me calling for the killing of the elderly African leadership. Nature dictates that the old at some point must die for the new to emerge. But this new must be prepared to learn from the old. I was in Liberia yesterday and I saw the inauguration of an old president. I got so worried. But when I saw the vice president, I left Nigeria, Li Liberia in a very comfortable way because I saw a generational mix where the old and the young coexist in one office. And I hope the vice president will not be suffocated 
because the president must know that with all his experience and advanced age, he has a duty to pass the baton to the younger generation. We call on all African leaders not to leave an office with a coffin. When the time comes for them to go, they must leave without calling the army to extend their term. No one is born a leader. No one is a traditional leader in a political office. If you want to be a traditional leader, go and fight in your tribe for those type of issues. We don't subscribe to people who want to leave a political office with a coffin. We will still give you a state funeral because you are a former president. We will still pay you pensions and give you protection and take care of you as long as you respect those who came after you. You have to ensure that democracy matures in such a manner in Africa where the previous president does not make it his business to fight the current president. You must allow the new to lead with all their faults because you are the same. It doesn't mean you are perfect. The young ones who are coming after you will challenge the current one. No African leader who is on retirement should lead from the grave. They must all be like all other progressive former presidents who are statesmen at home waiting for courtesy visits and consultation and attending to honor state functions. Those are the duties of former presidents because Africa must be stable. Africa must go through democracy at all times. And elections in Africa should never mean the blood on the floor. We Africans must hate seeing our own blood. We must always protect each other because we love ourselves so much that we don't want to see our own blood. I always tell them that white people do not want to see their own blood. That's why it's not easy for a white person to kill another white person. If a well-built white man comes in here and beat you up and you are thin like me, don't try to fight fiscal because you're going to be defeated. They are scared of their blood. Look for an object and threaten to throw that object on a white man. He's going to leave this hall running. Not because he's scared of the object, but he knows that he can be injured by the object and he will see his own blood. Africans don't have a problem with seeing their own blood. We kill each other at the slightest provocation. We don't negotiate power. We force our way into power. And in most cases, we are not even our, the initiators of this violence. It is white people who sponsor the black-on-black -black violence because of the absence of black consciousness, we find it easy to kill one another. The killings must stop in Africa. In Africa, guns must be replaced by hacks when we see each other, even when we disagree vehemently, we must agree to disagree in a brotherly and sisterly way because we value each other's blood. Canadians, we must make sure that we refuse the suppression of media freedom because without media freedom we are nothing. If there is anyone who can tell the world of any wrongdoing in Ghana and in South Africa and everywhere else, is the fourth estate. It must be protected. It doesn't matter how bad they write about you you must protect their right to write. Because without that pen, you must know there is an ushering in of a dictatorship. If media is suppressed, if media can write about corruption, if media takes bribes from governments, you must know those are the dark days of the African continent.
Today, we've got our own platforms on the social media. Let us help the traditional media to expose the corrupt leadership, to expose the mining companies that milk Africa without leaving anything in Africa. The gold of Ghana must remain in Ghana and service the people of Ghana. The minerals of Ghana, the minerals of South Africa must service Africa. The EFF believes in one Africa where we've got one president. I know Kwame Nkrumah was accused of wanting to be a president of Africa. There was nothing wrong with that. The man qualified because he woke us up from the dead. We are continuing with Kwame Nkrumah's call. Even if we don't achieve it in our lifetime, we must create a solid foundation for One Africa because One Africa is a threat to Europe and America. Africa with one president, Africa with one currency, Africa with one military command, Africa with one parliament is a threat that America cannot stand. Imagine a currency of Africa against the currency of USA. Ours will be based on the natural and mineral resources of our continent. And what will the currency of France be based on? Because France can't even produce anything for its survival. The whole soccer team of France is Africa. That's why when, that's why when France plays with Britain, we all unwittingly support France because we see the blackness of the team. That's how much important we are as Africa to this Europe, um, America, and all those who support neocolonialism. Fellow Ghanaians, anyone who says the people of Palestine must be killed is an enemy of ours. The people of Palestine have not committed any sin to anyone. These organizations that got passports here in Ghana during colonial times and during apartheid times, they were called terrorist organizations. But to us, they were never terrorist organizations. They were revolutionary organizations that seek the liberation of our own countries. We cannot listen to the same propaganda that was used against us during the years of liberation. Kwame Nkrumah was called a terrorist. Nelson Mandela is still on the list of terrorists in the USA because they fought for the self-determination of Africans. That's exactly what Hamas is demanding. That let the people of Palestine reclaim their own land. Let the people of Palestine have the self-determination without anyone imposing anything to the people of Palestine. If the people of Palestine want two-state solution, let them say so. No one must meet in UN or everywhere else and say there's going to be a two-state solution in Palestine. It must be the Palestinians themselves, like the South Africans decided that we are going to coexist with the settlers. We will not send them to the sea. It was not a decision of the UN. It was a conscious decision by South Africans. Why are the Palestinians not allowed to make the same self-determination? Shame on the leadership of Ghana for saying they support what is happening against the people of Gaza. They must be ashamed of themselves because any African who knows what settler, settlers do when they settle in your country will never support that nonsense that is happening in Palestine. <laughs> Ghanaians, we are not saying we are fighting the Jews. We are not saying women, Jewish women must be killed, Jewish children must be killed. Our struggle is against apartheid Israel and we make no apology about that and we want 
the apartheid of Israel collapsed with the immediate effect. We salute the government of South Africa for having listened to the EFF when we said that the Israeli ambassador and embassy must be removed from South Africa. Parliament of South Africa, through a motion placed by the EFF, took a resolution that Israeli embassy must leave South Africa because we cannot share the territory with bloody thirsty individuals who have declared war on humanity. What is happening in Palestine is genocide. It has got no any other name. You can't bomb a hospital. Even if the leader of Hamas is in that hospital, as long as he enters a hospital, you must cease fire and wait and work on an alternative solution to get him out of a hospital. You cannot bomb a refugee camp because there are international laws that governs how you treat refugee camps. Even when you don't agree with Hamas or any other thing of that nature. But please protect humanity. We need all those who want to give humanitarian support to be given a passage to enter Gaza, to send water, to send food, to send medical equipment and medicine in Gaza. Israel is refusing a passage for humanitarian intervention in Gaza. And every individual who is self-respecting, especially ourselves as Africans, can never agree with a country that can refuse people water because water is life. Ghanaians, the unity of this continent starts from here. Because the determination, the self-determination of Africa started from here. When you got your first independence, we knew that day, that one day South Africa will be free. And when Frelimo won in Mozambique, we celebrated in South Africa as if that, is, that was our freedom. But we knew that the freedom of the people of Mozambique means the freedom of South Africa. Because that's how we are connected. We celebrate each other's achievement. It started here in Ghana. It ended in South Africa. The unity of Africa must start here in Ghana and will capture it in South Africa because we always followed the leadership of the Ghanaian people. The economic freedom the economic freedom of Africa will start in South Africa. We want our land. We make no apology when we say we want our land. Our land was stolen and we want it back without paying a cent. And no one must pay for a cent everywhere in Africa when they demand the expropriation of land without compensation. These people came and stole your car and later on you discover your car. They say, it's true, it's your car. But pay us before you get this car back. And when you ask them why, you say, I must pay. They say, we've put make wheels, we've improved the car. Therefore, you must pay us. Irrespective of them being in possession of stolen property. Anyone in possession of stolen property is a criminal and therefore anyone in possession of our land without our permission is a land thief is a criminal and must be identified as such when I say to you demand the land and will lead that struggle from South Africa I know land brings about everything for you to have a hair saloon, you need land. For you to have a small shop of IT, you need land. The beautiful beaches belongs to the land. The mineral resources, the gold, 
iron ore, copper, and all types of mineral resources belong to the land. That's why when they came to Africa, they did not steal our women or our men. They stole the land. They knew women and men will come with the land. That's why we need to start from where they started when they offended us. We need to take the land. Because once we take the land, they will start respecting us. You will never be respected if you don't own property. It doesn't matter if all of us in South Africa own property. As long as the people of Namibia, as long as the people of Ghana do not own the land, then our land ownership is meaningless because when you go to the USA, they don't see South African. They see an African. West, they can't differentiate between South Africa and Ghana. That's why all of us must reclaim the land and the mineral resources of the land and the natural resources of the land so that when we move all over the world, when they see a black person, they should know these are the property owners of their own continent and their own land. So when we fight for economic freedom, we should do so without being ashamed. Because political freedom that Kwame Nkrumah achieved and generations after him achieved is meaningless without economic freedom. You can vote until you are purple. As long as there is no bread on the table, that vote is meaningless. You must vote when you arrive at home. You must find bread. You must find free education. You must find quality public health. You must find reliable electricity and not what we experienced earlier on. We must make sure that we own everything that belongs to us. So Africans, I don't care how many we are. We must believe in ourselves. At least be an individually liberated African who is not scared of colonizers, who is not scared of white people, who doesn't worship the establishment, who calls a spade a spade. That is the only way Africa will be respected. This continent is one. They might think they divided it. I can guarantee you now, like we saw when Ghana got liberated in South Africa, we said one day it will happen. It came many years after, but eventually it came. The unity of this continent is going to come. And when we call on each other to come into each other's countries, we must embrace that with ease. Me being here in Ghana, I don't feel like I'm in a different country. Because in this world, there is nothing different I'm not used to in South Africa. When I look at left or right, I see my brothers and sisters. When I walk outside and drive all over, I see the poverty of Africa that I see at home. So why would I claim I'm in a different home? Because conditions are the same. So when I'm here, I'm at home. When you are in South Africa, feel at home. South Africans are not xenophobic. South Africans are peace-loving people. And I extend my invitation to all of you to come and study in South Africa, to come and work in South Africa, to come and take your holidays in South Africa, because it is your home too. The same way you welcomed us here, will welcome you in South Africa. Thank you very much. Thank you.
very much. Round of applause again, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. I'm sure we are all waiting to ask a few questions. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to start with the young people in the house. So Paco, see if you can send the microphone uh, around so that... So question specific to what he said. And uh, we shouldn't go beyond the periphery of what he said. So we have to be very confined. Four people. I see a hand here. I see a hand over there. So let's start with this man. Good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Mr. G. Uh, I started monitoring uh, Julius Malema from about almost seven years now. Uh, I asked myself one time that does our presidents, all presidents all over the Africa, are listening to this man, and why still are we? Uh, uh, why are they not uh, following uh, his speeches, or why are they not implementing? what he is coming out with. And in fact, as he is in Ghana today, I'm very happy to see him here. And I want or we want all our Africans to emulate whatever he is saying to an implement Well, thank you very much, sir. We don't have time. Thank you. Um, there was a hand over there, the guy in blue. Yes. And then two one will come from here, one will come from here. Brief, brief. Thank you very much. I've always dreamed to get the please, opportunity... Please, let's go straight to the questions, please. I am about to ask the question. So ask. Yeah. Thank you very much. My question is, in South Africa, I have been monitoring Honorable Julius Malema for about 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I have about 500 of his videos on my phone here. Wow. I post his videos on various days. My friends actually call me Julius Malema. My question is, there is this guy in South Africa called Inala Lax, who is spearheading an operation called the Operation Dudula. I want to ask my president in waiting that how is he going to push this guy out from South Africa to make sure that the blacks in South Africa enjoy as the way they will enjoy in their country. Thank you very much. Junior Malema, round of applause. <laughs> yes, you. Pakwazi. Yes, sir. I saw this hand first, the one standing over here. Sorry. And then the chief at the back. Thank, thank you very much. My name is, my name is John Achukakito, a consultancy executive of Lejekugu, but hails from North Tongue. What I want to find out for Comrade Julius is that there's a problem in Africa. I won't mention, I won't illustrate my position with a political party, but I'm going to illustrate it A and B. <laughs> I thank Honorable Okuja too. He just look at me because I thought I come from North Tongue. <laughs> There's a problem in Africa. A and B. If you are in A and there's a wrong going on in A, in your submission, you talk about you call names, thieves, criminals. In in Ghana, Africa, if there is a corruption going on in A, you can come out and say it. When you say you are the black sheep of the family. So I want to find out, are we really, do we really want to build Africa? Do we, the hypocrisy and the pretense is one too many. I thank God that my MP is here. He's a very vocal person. Let us speak truth to power. That is the only way. Africa 
will come out from the deteriorating and the disgrace we go through. Thank I you. won't talk much. Thank you very much. Thank Aluta! You. The last one. Aluta! The man at the back in green. I saw him first, respectfully. Respectfully. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I am Isaac Ofwe Gedimatu from Tema, Nkrumah's Tema. Uh, you know, I have a similar platform. So, we, we give by this way. Nkrumah, Gave, and Rastafari Makonem. So when I say Nkrumah, I, you repeat after me. When I say Gave, I, repeat after me. Um, sir, Hello. for want of time. Ask yes, your question. It's all about Pan-Africanism. We know. Chroma, uh, Chroma, all... we know. Okay, Respectfully. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Malema. Thanks for coming here. We will monitor you for South Africa. Thank you very much. Now we are all here. I appreciate you. <laughs> there's... Um, there's... <laughs> Pakwazi. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Mr. Please, let's be silent, respectfully. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable. Yes, and then I again thank the organizers of this event. Um, my name is, let me mention, okay, I'm Engineer Dr. Bright Sugbe of African Development Council. My concern here is that the continent has been seen as the, the, I mean, the producers of raw materials and they want it to remain safe without any change. Um, one individual group, many, many groups arise on the continent seeking the same song. Honorable Malema, is there a way we can get all these groups together singing the same song at higher pitch and tone in order to I mean, achieve our results? Well, thank you very much. That will be all for the questions. Um, if our Honorable Malema, please, calm, calm, calm. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Okay, let him answer. Thereafter, if there's time, we'll take a few more questions. So, Comrade, Comrade Malema, if you may respond to... Yes, you can just stand here and respond to them. No, oh, thank uh, you. Yeah. Please, let's be calm. Let's be calm. Cho boy. Cho boy. Cho boy. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Uh, I think most of the points were just complimentary, more than anything. Ntanta Lux is not a different nation of South Africa. He wanted to use xenophobia for his rise to fame. Even the uh, uh, Tudula movement did not belong to him. He went to hijack it for his own selfish interest and we have reduced him to an insignificant molecule and therefore no one can rise in Africa on the ticket of xenophobia. That is the beginning and the end of your political career. So anyone who says such politics is not worth entertaining because they are short-lived politics and they will never be sustained because politics are based on history, on philosophy, on ideology. Who of the ideological icons that are celebrated internationally and politically, progressively, who has arisen into power on the basis of xenophobia. So it, that's why it's not sustainable. So please, such individuals who seek to project us as wrong people in South Africa, do not take them to heart. Uh, I like that. You see, speak truth to power. But please don't, don't want to be liked. A lot of us, we suffer from wanting to be liked especially being liked by people in power because you seek favors i seek no favor 
for because I believe in myself. So you ought to believe in yourself. If you are an engineer like my brother here, if you are a doctor like my sister here, you've got the qualifications, you've got what it takes. You're not going to be scared of some illiterate because it comes from the bush and they say he's a soldier, a non-thinker. And you are scared that when I oppose this person, he will point a gun at me. You must tell him that put it here and shoot me and make sure I die. Because I'm not scared of death. I'm scared to die before I die. Because the day you stop telling the truth and you are pretending and you seek to be liked, you are dead. You are equal as a dead person because you are not enjoying anything. So when I live here, I'm not worried there's someone who's going to call and say, yeah, those things you spoke about them there, uh, pay me the money I borrowed you. Uh, I don't owe anyone anything, nothing. I don't seek favors from a white man, from colonialists, from anyone. So my brother, don't be scared. Don't try to really impress cor because you are impressing corruption. You are not impressing that person. You want to be liked by corruption. So you can't seek love from corruption. Corruption is the destroyer of the future and must be fought here in Ghana and it must be fought in South Africa and it must be fought all over Africa. So please let's not be scared to confront the powers that be. Um, you know, these people, when they came to enslave our people here, they were not coming to enslave people. They came to steal the minerals. They were not coming for us. Then they ended up fetching us as well to join the minerals. <laughs> we were first like minerals. We were traded like minerals. When you think of undermining the democratic achievements that we've made, Think of those people who were enslaved, put in boats, in their numbers chained, taken outside of our beautiful continent by force. And they could not chain you as an individual. They have to chain you ten by ten. When the sea goes crazy and the boat can't stand the wind, they think he maybe is overweight. In the middle of the sea, they take ten of you. They push you out of the boat so that the boat can sail with the remaining slaves. When the boat slave continues to, to continue to carry our people out of the continent, ten of them pushed out, twenty of them pushed out, both their hands and feet chained. There is nothing so painful to die without a fight. Hmm. That even when you know this shark is going to kill me, let me try. Maybe I'll be Moses and hold the mouth. And let that time the shark is attacking you, 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 you die with dignity because you have put some sense of fight. But our people did not have that dignity. They died chained. And we are not here to impress anyone who wants to undermine the legacy and the struggles of those people who died chained. We are not about these people who exist now. We are about President Rawlings. We are about Kwame Nkrumah. We are about all those who came before us. These ones that are still with us will be reminded of what we come from. Because they must never think they made us. They were made by those chained slaves. Every time you want to do wrong, every time you want to undermine the struggle and the unity of Africa, remember our people died chained. They could not put up a fight. We are fighting on their behalf and will never retreat until their dignity is restored. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Comrade Julius Malema. I'm sorry we may not be able to take any more questions.
Okay. Well. Yeah. Yes. He has a flight to catch. So respectfully, let's respect his time as well. I know we have tons of, of questions for him. So yes. Now let let me respectfully um, acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Kwashi, a South African and a member of EFF here seated at the front seat. Give us a wave. <laughs> right. That being said, we have a very wonderful presentation. But before then, I think it's imperative that I acknowledge Dr. Kofi Amwa, also known as Citizen Kofi, who was slated to speak today, but for want of time he was unable to so do. Um, but he's been very, very instrumental in the organization of this wonderful dialogue. I think it's important that we give him a, a round of applause, please. <laughs> also, a big thank you to African Development Council. You spoke. Sir, thank you very much for your support. We greatly appreciate uh, your support. So, Shall I invite up here Nanaya Jantua, former General Secretary for the CPP, to help us with the presentation, as well as uh, my brother Ludwig and Bernard Bonner. Please, come up stage. We received lots of gifts from Batakari to Kinte, um, you know, for our wonderful comrade Julius Malema. Round of applause, please, for them. You see, the woman is upset because she intimates that I didn't give uh, the, woman, the, woman, the woman a fair opportunity. But next time I will so do, I'll do that. <laughs> yeah, next time I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Juju, those who did this say that this, yes, this is a smoke. And knowing the way the EFF dresses, someone is asking for a contract to produce this for EFF oh, and design wow. it. If we have to do African trade, yeah. then it must start from here. Yeah. And so one was presented to you earlier, yeah. two more is here. Yeah. And so it tells you that all the executives of EFF, yeah. when you resume, Start wearing this African solidarity. That's the lady that donated this. So they will, they will dress you with one. Oh. Not I have Now announce the Arise Ghana. Thing. Then the next one is the Arise Ghana t shirt just to show oh, yes. the relationship between Arise Ghana and the EFF. Arise! Thank you very much, Juju. Arise! Arise! Well, thank you very much. Um, wow, so beautiful. All right, um, we are in the dying embers of this dialogue, and on behalf of Arise Ghana, we'd like to say a big thank you to all of you. But before we go, I'd like my colleague Parkwesi Shandoff to take over from me. All right, um, we would want to now have the closing prayer. Baba Sadiq. Understand you do us the honor of the closing prayer. Please put your hands together for Baba Sadi. Young, dynamic, energetic young man. Shall we all be on our feet, ladies and gentlemen? Baba Sadi. Take the closing prayer. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Rahmanir Rahim. Maliki Yomi Dain. Iya Kanabudu. Iya Kanastaim. Hidden as Ratal was the Kim, Sratal Lezin Anam Talahim, Gary Magdubi Alahim, Waladwalim. We offer this prayer in thanks to Allah for a successful program. We offer this uh, prayer for Allah. Uh, we beg for good health, 
we go for we beg for good energy wisdom um and the, and the and the sense of fighting within us to see it through all may allah instill in us the sense of fight to see it through the end we ask allah to forcefully remove from among us corrupt leaders liars thieves economic terrorists whose only call to leadership is to enrich their family and friends may allah truly liberate us from the wicked leadership and despots whose reign doesn't bear fruits we pray for a prosperous ghana and africa that offers growth opportunities and sustainable life for lose for all rabbi ni liman anzalta ilayha min ahirin fakirun bismillahir rahmanir rahim qul wallahu ahad allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakul lahu kufuwan ahad amin all right it's been a pleasure having all of you bye bye